Hi, this is Andrew Jones with Climate Interactive, and I'm here with a thought experiment video to explore the possible role of simulators that are customizable, like ours called En-ROADS, to help explore climate transition risk, particularly for financial institutions, and particularly how we can use these simulators to complement what's being done with the excellent disaggregated large integrated assessment models to think about various futures and their financial implications. En-ROADS was built with MIT Sloan Sustainability Initiative, calibrated to the best available science, including the uh, integrated assessment models that are out there and constantly improved over time by our scientific team at Climate Interactive. Um, I'd like to explore natural gas and possible futures for natural gas as we address climate change. But this is really isn't about natural gas. It's more exploring the role of customized inputs, customized outputs, and then transparency, where you can change assumptions in a model to explore climate and climate transition risk and value it financially. Let's go check it out. Let's think about some futures for natural gas. This is a graph of primary energy from gas in exajoules per year from 2010 out to 2100 for six different integrated assessment models. So in a world that's heading somewhere towards a little above four degrees, all the models are showing that we would burn more gas in this business as usual future. And this is particularly for a future that's part of the story of what's called SSP2 baseline. SSP2 is the shared socioeconomic pathway number two, the, the middle of the road. And you can imagine that a financial institution trying to calculate, well, what might happen to gas and what are the financial implications of it if the world takes action? You can explore another scenario. And that other scenario that we can see here is called 4.5, excuse me. That is the radiative forcing level of 4.5, which corresponds, that's watts per meter squared, that corresponds to about 2.6 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. So it doesn't get to two degrees, but gets much of the way. How would a financial institution do, particularly if it's invested in gas? So you could compare and say, well, there's the baseline and then this, and this is the kind of future you could see uh, with a 4.5 or 2.6 degree Celsius scenario. The key thing to notice here is that in all these scenarios, emission, excuse me, exajoules per year from gas goes down relative to what it would have been otherwise. So I want you to compare the baseline against 4.5, baseline 4.5, less from gas in all the scenarios relative to what it would have been otherwise. And if we go down below 2.6 to another scenario, even less gas, this one is a, actually a two degree scenario, even less relative to what it would have been otherwise. And then this is all the way down towards, similar to 1.5 degrees Celsius, even less. The key thing is more action, less gas. Now let's look over and see, explore some other scenarios that are being considered in the world, that are being discussed, that um, ought to be able to be quantified and included in any financial analysis on climate transition risk. To do that, I'm going to use the En-ROADS simulator. And it's available online. In a minute, we'll show the version that's not available online, our proprietary version of it. But you can go and try this yourself, uh, create this scenario. And to first set us up, I want to get something similar to where the uh, integrated assessment models land. And that's with starting with some action in uh, areas other than energy so that we can really replicate the same scenario. And for this scenario, I'm going to explore what if the world takes action on other gases in uh, agriculture uh, and in forests and in oil and gas and industry. We're going to imagine if we take, the world takes 40% of the potential action, watch the line in the bottom right for non-greenhouse gas emissions as it falls, and in the top right corner, is all of the gases that are being emitted in a stacked format. You can see the green land use above it is energy CO2, F gases, methane, and N2O. And in this scenario where we take action in ag and 
industry and oil and gas, watch what happens to the blue area. The blue area from methane shrinks and so does nitrous oxide and F gases and the temperature goes down from 4.1 to 3.7. We'll explore other things like if we took action with uh, less deforestation, we're going to have that reduce 7.5% a year and so that gets us down to 3.6 and what if we also have some carbon removal in this case 20% of what the Royal Society thinks is possible from five different types of carbon dioxide removal techniques look at the top left here you can see that rise up to about three or four gigatons a year removal we can imagine more but for now let's just imagine three or four that is of the different types that are listed here so starting with the world that's taking action outside of energy that brought temperature down to 3.5. Let's explore other ways to get there. And I'm gonna switch over, actually we'll switch over to another view, which is, looks at that same scenario, We've, we're taking action in these areas, in non-energy, but it looks at global sources of primary energy in a stacked form. You can see brown is coal, red is oil, natural gas in blue, renewables, bioenergy, nuclear, and there's a new tech, new tech that doesn't exist, but it could get invented. Over on the right is natural gas primary energy demand, the same variable that we saw over here with the graphs um, from the integrated assessment model. So we're going to watch and see when we take action, will the line for natural gas primary energy demand always go down like in the integrated assessment models, or are there other scenarios that we could explore with this simulator. So let's replicate what's being done in most of the integrated assessment models, which is to imagine this future of climate action as a proxy of carbon price. So I'm going to choose a carbon price here. And in this case, we're gonna choose $100 a ton. It's gonna to be achieved over 10 years. You'll see it first in the bottom right as the line moves up to $100 and $110 a ton. And then in the top left, you can see what is the change that happens in the energy mix. So I'll run it again, and you can see the biggest change, of course, is in the brown area of coal. Coal shrinks. The green area of wind and solar expands. It gets wider. The total area shrinks as energy demand goes down some. And natural gas, we can see, uh, falls. You can see the blue line departing from the black line, 3.5 degrees goes to 2.6. In this scenario, we have recreated something similar to a radiative forcing of 4.5 like we were exploring earlier, and like this scenario, but we're really gonna focus on this next 20 years, out to 2040. And what it's showing is that we have less natural gas in this scenario. Okay, this seems consistent with those other models and should be strongly considered as what could happen to natural gas. But I'm gonna to go to another view and then create another scenario for things that many executives talk about, which is, well, there are many paths to get to radiative forcing of 4.5 or to that temperature of 2.6 degrees C. What is one that's very different? And I'm gonna make one that's quite exaggerated. It's uh, super exaggerated and then like, well, what if we got there through really a focus on coal? If some of the trends with coal continue and there really is no more investment in coal infrastructure starting in 2025, imagine first what'll happen to this brown area in the top left, but then what's gonna happen to natural gas primary energy demand? So I'm gonna turn it on and we see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna replay it a couple times. Watch the brown area shrink as coal shrinks, but much of that demand goes to natural gas to produce our electricity, and natural gas primary energy demand goes up. Temperature drops from 3.5 to 3.0, and we get, even, we get more natural gas, not less, in a world that's taking action in a different way on climate. We could also accentuate it even more what if there were to be um, action in uh, electrification? So what if we maximized electrification in transport even more? What if there was advanced electrification if buildings and industry of 3% a year? We get even more, 2.8.
And what if um, we supplemented this with even more electrification? And in this case, the world also takes action with some energy efficiency in buildings and transport. Um, oh, and, and a little bit of a focus on less oil. So a different scenario, some energy efficiency, electrification, no coal, but also some more pressure uh, on the oil industry. Same temperature, 2.6 degrees. Let's look and see what's happening over this next 20 years of natural gas. And you can see it rising significantly in this scenario. So there's the big difference, is the difference between same temperature, 2.6, 2.6, 2.6, 2.6. The next 20 years, however, natural gas down, natural gas up. There's a good bit of uncertainty of what the implications would be of climate action on the natural gas industry. And I mean this as an example of the kinds of um, uncertainties that are out there and the kinds of kind of black swan scenarios that might want to be considered in financial analysis of climate transition risk. Noting that along the way, it can be helpful not just to accept the model as is, but to really probe and this is the comp component of transparency I wanted to note, that many of the assumptions in the model are made explicit here. An important one on natural gas is the progress ratio. Every doubling of cumulative capacity of natural gas right now brings down the cost 10%. What if that's more? Then we would get more natural gas. What if it's all the way down here? If learning happens faster, you can explore the difference between those different scenarios. Many of the other assumptions are also available, such as the climate sensitivity to a doubling of carbon, which is another really important number in this area. Okay, now I've just showed you exajoules of energy. What does that mean in financial terms? How big a deal is it? Well, what we did was we looked at the full version of En-ROADS, which is the offline proprietary version made in another interface that allows you to change various things, and then explored financial implications. In this case, uh, net income down here at the bottom for electric utilities of different types, coal, oil, and gas renewables, the refiners of coal, oil, and gas, extractors of coal, oil, and gas, and the operating income, and then tables that show you cumulative operating income over the period of 2020 to 2040. Some back of the envelope quick math is right here for extractors level. This is just for natural gas. You can see for every year, what is the operating income here? Around 200 billion growing up towards 250, towards 300 under the different scenarios. The first scenario I showed you, carbon prices, I showed you it um, was lower, or excuse me, the base is the green. In this scenario, the operating income, annual operating income goes down and following the blue line. That was the carbon price scenario. Under the scenario where we had less coal, less oil, more electrification, we have a good bit more extraction, production of operating, uh, excuse me, of natural gas. And when we add up the cumulative operating income 2020 to 2040, uh, it was about $4.8 trillion difference between those two scenarios. The implications of the scenario is significant as well at the utility level. This is the util electric, electric utilities operating income for every year, same way the base is the blue, excuse me, it's green, the carbon price is the blue scenario, and then the red scenario is uh, with less uh, coal and uh, a very different scenario. The difference in operating income there over 2020 to 2040, in this case, is $10.1 trillion. So switching back here, what we're offering is the potential for customized inputs, customized outputs, and then transparency to allow people to imagine various different futures and integrate that quantification of those scenarios with En-ROADS into financial analysis to assess climate transition risk. You can play with the model again at uh, enroads.org and uh, come to view all the assumptions behind it at climateinteractive.org.